Hi. Suppose you're building a financial model for valuing a company and your task is to try and find out uh, what are the revenues of the company going to be in the next year, right? How would you go about doing it? Kisi bhi company ka agle saal ka revenue ya usse agle saal ka revenue project karne ke liye hamare paas kya methods available hain? And when you're building a financial model, how are you going to kind of approach this? What are the challenges with the existing methods that we have or which method is better than the other methods? That's what we are going to try and discuss in this particular video. If you haven't subscribed to our channel as yet, would request you to do so. If you have any feedback about the content, please do share that in the comment section. Let's jump right into it. So generally, the most uh, common method that is used is uh, to sort of look at historical numbers, right? Historical growth rates and then try and project future growth rate using that. While that is a common method and in a lot of cases that is what you rely on, there are a couple of challenges that come up because of that approach, right? What are those challenges? Right. First challenge, I'll take an example and show that to you. Uh, we have Maruti's uh, numbers for a bunch of years across, uh, uh, you know, the last decade or so. Now, imagine you're sitting in 2018. You're sitting here in 2018 and you're trying to project revenues for subsequent years, right? 18 or 19. And you look at historical growth rates. Numbers have gone from 44,000 to 50,000, from there to 57, 68, 79,000. You would assume that's a healthy sort of growth rate. In fact, it sort of doubles in about five years. That's uh, 44,000 becoming 86,000 uh, crore. Your expectation would be that, you know, uh, if I use historical growth rates, it would continue growing at that rate. And yet, you know, partly because of Corona and partly because the auto industry itself was kind of saturated to a point in between, it really had, didn't, did not have too much of a growth in this period. I mean, there were other ancillary issues as well. For example, Corona came in 2021. But even before that, there was a dip in growth. This was when the BS4 stage vehicles were shifted to BS6. And, you know, there was a little bit of a challenge around that, if I'm not wrong. Right. So that kind of causes uh, a dip or a decline in revenues. If I'm using historical growth rates, I'm likely to project a higher number. And that's not going to come. Not gonna come right. Now, cut to about 2022. Now you see last three years, there's no real growth and you're sitting and trying to project for subsequent years. And again, if I use historical averages, I'll probably say that it'll continue growing at a slow pace and so on and so forth. The next two years, massive growth, partly because it came out of Corona and partly because I think the industry itself revived over uh, that period. There were a bunch of ancillary challenges, issues that went into this. But reality is that, that if I just rely on historical numbers to forecast future numbers, I am essentially assuming that a company that is growing will keep growing and a company that is not growing will not grow, will never grow in the future. And that's not how real life works, right? That is where the challenge is. There is another problem. This is not the only problem that comes up. The other problem is, let's say, for example, I'm sitting here in 2024 and I project the numbers of 2025 and I say, okay, next year, the revenue will be 1,60,000 crore or whatever, right? Now, maybe it is 1,60,000, maybe it is not. When you're building a financial model, it's an ongoing process. It is not like I've made a model, ek bar a model bana diya aur usko chhod diya, iske baad hum uspe kuch kaam karenge. You will keep revisiting the model again and again. So you refine your assumptions, you kind of come back, understand it and so on and so forth. This is an ongoing process. If it is an ongoing process and next year I made an assumption, let's say, and let's say argument sake that assumption went wrong. Now, if the assumption went wrong, where did I go wrong? I don't know that, right? So I have a slightly different method around this. Now, of course, you will need to get a little bit more granular around it. But then how do you get granular in any industry that you're looking at? So there's a small hack around this, right? What do you do is think of yourself as the business owner. And now let's say you are the business owner. You go and tell your employees and your team that, uh, you know, we are going to grow sales by 25% this year. 25, 30, 20, koi bhi number le liye, any number. Aap apne team ko bol rahe hain ki hum sales ko 20-25% se grow karenge is saal. Now the team may ask some questions, right? They will ask questions. They are likely to ask questions. Those questions should give you an idea about the revenue drivers. Take an example. Let's say you are Maruti's CEO or owner in terms of the promoter of Maruti and you say we will grow revenues at 25% next year. So the team is likely to ask questions. The team will ask questions. Will India passenger vehicle market grow by that much? Do you think the market itself will grow at that much? 
or they will ask that will the market share of Maruti grow that much, which will cause this 25% jump. Or you will say, will the price per car grow that much? If you think about it, it's a combination of these three. If India sells a certain number of cars, let's say India sells argument say 50 lakh cars and Maruti's market share in that is let's say 40%. So we are saying 50 lakh into 40% should be 20 lakh cars. And 20 lakh cars getting sold at let's say 8 lakh per car should give you 1 lakh 60,000 crore kind of a revenue. Right? Now, if this is wrong next year in your assumption, you're testing your assumption against the actual numbers that come out. Let's say you go wrong. Now you can actually check. Did you go wrong on the market? Did you go wrong on the market share? Or did you go wrong on the price per car or a mix of those? Right? Then you can refine your assumptions further. So it's always a good idea to try and dig a little bit deeper, go a bit granular in your projection numbers. And that's the methodology I tend to use, the simple method. Change the company to something else. Maybe you change the company to a steel company. So in a steel business, you're basically going to say, I'm going to grow revenue by 25%. Your team will ask, okay, will you increase volumes? Will you increase capacity utilization? Right? Is that something that can be increased? is there going to be a jump in price per price of steel, right? So what is really going to change, right? If you are, let's say, PVR cinemas and you tell your uh, employees that, you know, your team that, you know, uh, you're going to grow revenue, ticket revenue by 25%, people will ask, will you increase number of screens or will you increase seats per screen, right? Or will you increase shows per screen, right? Or will you increase occupancy, which is how many people are actually in the cinema hall, or will you increase average ticket price? Technically, it's a multiplication of these. If I have 10 screens and each screen has 200 seats and shows are four per day per screen, so two, you know, 2,000 into four, 8,000 is my capacity. Occupancy, let's say, is 25%. So I'm going to get 2,000 people in and 2,000 people in multiplied by that's the average ticket price of 200. That should give me my daily revenue multiplied by 365 is my annual revenue. If somebody is saying they're going to increase this by 25%, your question is what is going to increase in this? And in this process, you will actually realize some of them don't change at all. I mean, in, in some of these, you won't see, you know, seats per screen can't change on an aggregate basis. It won't change dramatically. Shows per screen can't change because outside of the metros, most cities, uh, you would have a block time in which you'll run cinema halls, evenings, night you don't run the cinema hall early morning you don't run really shows unless there's a new movie that is releasing or something of that sort and it is a weekend business so predominantly occupancy hovers between 20 to 30 percent nothing beyond that so you can only change a couple of things uh, which is you can change the screens or you can change average ticket price even ticket price you can change only to a certain point you can't change beyond that because then you know the demand falls off so in this process you also dig deeper about the business about the sector but more importantly, you can formulate an equation about how do you go about building a revenue driver sheet? What is driving your revenue? Can you go a bit more granular than just using historical data to forecast sales growth? That is what the endeavor is, right? Let's actually try this on Maruti's uh, example. So we have this Excel file here where we actually have India's passenger vehicle market that uh, looks at uh, you know, how many cars have been sold in India and how many have been exported. And we have Maruti's uh, details with respect to how many have they sold in India and how many they've sold as exports. And I can actually calculate market share, historical market share. So basically, that will be Maruti's domestic car sales divided by India's car market and Maruti's export car sales divided by India's export of cars market. And I can copy and paste this across the years. You will note there was an initial decline in 21, 22, 23. That was when the market actually moved dramatically towards SUVs and Tata Motors and m, &M basically gained at the expense of the small car market, which was there. Um, so that went down. But then since then, it has stabilized, right? And then given this, I know total cars sold and I know total revenue. So I can actually find out realization per car. Yeah. Revenue, remember, is an INR crore. So I'll multiply it with 10 raised to 7. And divided by the total car sold, sold by Maruti. So I get a blended realization 
and I can calculate the change in those realizations as well. Right? And I see that constantly that realization per car has gone up, which may be largely because some part of it could be input cost rise and we can check that as well. But some part of it could just be, you know, realization increase because product mix has moved towards uh, higher value cars. Maruti ab zada higher value cars bech raha hai. To essentially, realization per car average number jo hai, wo upar chala ja raha hai uski wajah se. Correct? Now I have a granularity and I can make some assumptions and projections. So I can assume a growth rate of India's car market in 2026. I can assume a number for uh, what is going to be the export market and we can, we can route this through uh, growth numbers as well. So I can say 5% growth or whatever. But let's say I uh, actually let's do that itself. So I'm going to make an assumption on growth. So let's put growth and growth and make an assumption on growth of India's passenger vehicle market and India's export of passenger vehicles market. And let's say hypothetically, I put a number of 10% growth here and I put a number of 10% growth here. That's not the point. I mean, we're not debating the actual assumption about the sector. We're just trying to figure out what is the logic, right? So if I do this, then I get the export sales and I similarly get the domestic uh, passenger vehicle sales. I can remove the decimal points to keep it consistent. Now I can make an assumption for what is going to be their market share. And let's say I say Maruti will regain some part of its market share. Argument sake, if that is an assumption and it goes to 45% each, then I know that 45% of India's car market, 45% of India's domestic car market is what Maruti sells, and 45% of exports is also what Maruti sells. Once again, I will format this and ensure that decimals go off. I will quickly add these two to get the total car sales. And now, if I know that Maruti is going to sell a total of 25 lakh cars next year, and I can make an assumption on what is going to be the realization growth, let's say 4% argument sake. So my realization will be 684 into 1 plus 4% that comes here. And if I multiply this with 25 lakh cars and divide it by 10 raised to 7, I will get an estimate for next year's revenue. Let's format these both in the same format as earlier and we see 1,78,000 crore is what is going to be our expectation of revenue. Now, this may not be correct. That's okay. That's not the point. Point is if we go wrong, go next year and check the number and that number is not correct. We have checked the number next year and this is not 1,78,000 crore. This is not 1,78,000 crore. Then we now go deeper and say, did I go wrong on India's growth of the passenger vehicle market, domestic and export sales. Did I go wrong on Maruti's market share or did I go wrong on realization or a mix of these? And then I read a little bit more about it. Then I can do research on it and then I can find and refine my model further. So the idea here is to go one step deeper than just using historical numbers and then go granular with respect to what do you think are poor drivers. For that, think of yourself as a business owner and see what are the, what are the drivers that you will work on to increase sales of that business and then try and model it if you have data around it. As long as you have data, try and project that data and see, you know, over a period you'll realize whether your assumptions are going right or wrong and that will improve your understanding of the company, your understanding of the valuation of the business and uh, overall sectoral uh, viewpoint as well. So that's what you would want to do. Try it out, pick up a company, Explore this entire revenue driver idea and see what your experience is. Do you learn more about the business? Do you learn more about the sector? And let us know what you learned about the particular company or sector in the comments. That's it from me. Thanks a lot.